Welcome back everyone. I recently got a lovely new bit of kit, this Flashback 2 delay pedal from TC Electronic, who, in the interests of YouTube full disclosure, are not sponsoring me. Yet. So I thought now, while I'm basking in the glow of new gear day, might be a good time to talk about some creative uses for delay. It's not just there to give some ambience to make your epic guitar solos more epic, although let's be clear, there's nothing wrong with that. You can use it creatively as a tool in your arrangements and build compositions around it. Indulge me for a few minutes. Let's get into some pedal nerding. And stick with me until the end of the video, because we're going to talk about the practicalities of building this stuff into your songs. First up, we've got dotted eighths. This is a technique that allows you to play flowing, rhythmic parts that would be impossible to play otherwise. It sounds like this. You may have come across this sort of stuff from players like The Edge, Paul Gilbert or Rob Scowlin. To explain it, we need to get into a very quick bit of music theory. Let's take a regular bar of 4-4 time and divide it into its four quarter notes. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3. Four. So let's divide those in half again to give us eight notes. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. What a dotted eighth delay does is to play back what we've played into it one and a half of those eighth notes later. So it fills in the gaps and makes it sound like we're playing a string of sixteenth notes. You can set this up with your delay pedal by turning up the delay time until it's keeping time with your eighth note count. One and two and three and four and. and then play straight eighth notes and turn up the delay time until it locks in time with what you're playing. Alternatively, if your pedal has a subdivision switch like this, you can set your delay time to match your quarter note count, one, two, three, four, and then flip the switch to dotted eighths, and play an eighth notes. Okay, next we've got something a little simpler but no less cool, using delay to play harmonies with yourself. You may have heard this in Queen songs, on the guitar solo in Brighton Rock, and on the vocals in the Prophet song, which you should listen to because it is a criminally underrated song. With this, you just set up a long delay time, then take your tempo from that and start playing. It can be a bit of a challenge to think about harmonising with yourself on the fly, so maybe start with a simple scale. From there you can branch out into building something out of arpeggiating a chord. And once you get more comfortable you can start building whole phrases into it. If we take this to an extreme, cranking the delay time way up, we get into the realm of frippertronics. I've gone into more detail about this in another video with much cooler lighting, but the basic idea is you turn your delay time way up, like you get three seconds or more, and just start playing a duet with your past self. As the delay time gets longer, it becomes harder to sync up perfectly like you would with the Queen style delay, so we end up playing in a more exploratory, dreamy kind of way. It's as much meditation as composition. Speaking of all things ambient and vibey and meditative, let's talk about swells. If you're playing an instrument with a volume knob, you're good to go, but if not, you might need to get a volume pedal, or alternatively use the Flashback 2, which has its own swell functionality built in. I'll show you how to do it the classic volume knob way. Basically, all we're doing is playing a note, then while it's ringing out, we fade up the volume, cutting off the attack at the beginning of the note. You can do this without delay, I've added a bit of distortion just to give the note some sustain, but if you do, it can turn your simple swell into something beautiful.
Shorter delay times and higher feedback can make for a denser sound. While longer times can make for something with more ambient vibes. If you add a Frippertronic style delay after this, you can get into some gorgeous ambient sounds. Okay, the last technique on our list is one I haven't seen used a lot, and which I've developed inspired by the pedal boards and playing of acoustic wizards Mike Dawes and John Smith. The idea here is to fade in a short delay with high feedback to create a swell to accentuate a moment in a song. Unlike the swells we were talking about earlier, we're fading in the delay sound on top of the unaffected sound, so we'll need a delay pedal that lets you control the delay level in real time, which is what's happening with this little yellow LED when I press harder on the foot switch. Or if you're feeling fancy, I suppose you could rig up something with a volume pedal and a delay in parallel with your clean sound anyway. The point here is not for the delay to be in time with anything in particular, we're just adding a little bit of chaos to build anticipation for a moment in your song, so short delay time and high feedback should do the trick. Left to its own devices, this delay would sound like this. But if we bring it in in the last few beats of a build up, you get this. So there we have it, five creative uses for delay in your arrangement. As you may have noticed, some of these might seem a little bit out there, or at the very least a bit tricky to pull off in performance. So a few things to bear in mind here, starting with timing. With dotted eights, or queen style self-harmonizing, because of the precise timing needed, if you're going to put this in the middle of a song, you're probably going to need a pedal with a tap tempo, so you can make sure that your delay is synced up to the rest of the song. Or alternatively, have it in a part of the song where everyone else drops out and you and your delay can set the tempo. If the band then comes in following your tempo, make sure they have a good clear sound in their monitor so they can keep time. If they can't quite hear your delay effect, the whole song could fall apart. And with Frippertronics, it's going to be even more of a challenge to sync it up with a band, so this may be something to use either as a floaty ambient background layer for your arrangement, or even as a solo interlude between songs to keep the mood going at gigs. To cut a long story short, these techniques are as much about composition as they are about tone and texture, so it's worth taking your time to build your arrangements around them. They won't work everywhere, but when they do, they can make for some unforgettable moments. Thanks for joining me for some nerding out about one of my very favourite effects. Let me know how you get on in the comments. If you want to catch any more of this, please do subscribe and click the notification bell, as there's plenty more to come about arrangement, music production, and creativity in general. And if you'd like to help me grow this channel, please do send this video to someone you think would enjoy it. Okay, have fun, I'll see you soon. Bye.